So you ready for the Daytona 500 or what? YouTube, welcome to another episode of Trezian Racing. Uh, I'm Ryan and I'm here. I'm gonna be building a rear end today, a differential for my friend and fellow racer uh, who's gonna be racing with me on January 1st, along with hopefully a lot of other cars. Um, so, like promised, I'm gonna show you guys how I build this and how I put these things together. This is probably my eight or maybe ninth uh, four nine inch style rear end uh, or differential build. I work for General Motors, so I do a lot of those style rear ends at work. Um, a lot of front differentials and rear differential rebuilds, which are a lot harder, and I don't like doing them as much as these because you can do these on a workbench, um, and they're stronger, just easier to work with. So I'm going to show you guys how I build these things and put it together and hopefully get enough time to work on my car as well. So I'm going to put you guys up there on my wall of clutter, and hopefully you can see everything I'm doing. I'll try to explain stuff here and there, but I gotta go, so stay tuned. Okay, so I started doing this thing already and I kind of forgot to film. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I did so far. Uh, he got a new gear, brand new gear set, which is, this is the pinion gear and the ring gear is down there in the box still. Um, he gave me a pumpkin uh, that already had a 7.0 gear ratio inside, which is right here and here. So I'm basically just going to take the old green gear off, reuse his um, his spool here, and then I'm making a whole new housing with the new pinion gears, or pinion gear and new bearings in there. So uh, basically what I did is I just knocked this bottom bearing on um, with my special differential pinion bearing tool, which is basically just a pipe and a hammer. So I knocked that on. And then I use crush sleeves. Um, for a lot of people say that in racing or in our style racing, you should be using a solid spacer with different shims and it's, it takes a lot more time to set them up. Um, and a crush sleeve, it's a one-time use. So if you do mess up on your bearing preload, you'd have to get a new pinion bearing um, crush sleeve and then restart all over again. But so far in my experience, I have not had a problem with the crush sleeve failing or giving out. Um, I run a 733 gear in my race car now, which is pretty high. And most people say when you run that high, there's so much torque on the pinion bearings that that crush sleeve will actually flex and distort and it'll lose preload or it'll lose the preload on the crush sleeve over time. I've never seen that happen with my rear ends and I've been racing uh, on my gears that I build for, I don't know, as long as I've been racing. So about seven years now, and I've never seen a pinion bearing failure so far. Had a lot of other failures, mostly um, crash-related failures, um, ring, and, ring and pinion teeth chipping off and stuff when you hit a wall or you hit another car or something. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna use a crush sleeve here and uh, basically you gotta get a big old pry bar or um, I actually use an impact socket and crush that baby down. So you guys watch how I do that. Okay, so let me explain what you guys just saw in that really fast video. Um, he got a new yoke, so put the new yoke on. Um, and when you do that, you need to seal off the thread somehow. And what I use, I just use regular RTV. Ultra gray RTV. Um, seals up pretty good. And he had got a brand new pinion nut also. So it already had a bunch of red Loctite on the thread of the pinion nut. So that's good. Otherwise, I would have had to put my own red, uh, red Loctite on it. And I just ran it all the way down um, and was spinning 
the uh, the housing here. Well, it's held by the vise right now. But anyways, I spin the housing and feeling when it was getting close, and then when it was finally starting to get a little bit of preload, um, I checked it, and this is my tool I'm using, guys. This is ridiculous, I know, but it works, and it's not that far away from being accurate. You don't have to be, you know, to the inch pound on this stuff. It just has to be a general, you know, within five pounds, you're probably okay. Um, something I got off Amazon, it's like maybe 15 bucks. It wasn't that bad at all. This is what I use in the dealership, guys. This is what I'm using um, in my profession, and I've never had to let me down um, this tool. Like I said, it's not exactly accurate, but as long as you know what you're going for and what you're shooting for, um, it'll work out. So with new bearings on the four nine, nine inches, I like to get a little bit more than, than they call for, at least in the passenger car stuff, um, especially that I'm using the crush sleeve. I think maybe the people that are saying that the crush sleeve is not a great thing and it always is failing is maybe the people that are not getting enough preload on them also. Um, so I like to get a little bit more than, than usual preload. Um, so it's got some good drag to it. I shot for about 20 inch pounds. The book called for, I think for 12 or 14, um, for, you know, just for a regular passenger car rebuild. So I like to go high and when they break in, they get really hot, especially in racing conditions. So um, they do wear in a little bit and you want to keep some preload on them. Um, and the way to do that is to get enough to start with. So um, that's all done. I'm ready to put this in the pumpkin now um, and start shimming it. And going from there, I can put the new ring gear on the spool, and you guys can watch all that stuff happen right One more here. thing, guys, on this uh, pinion preload thing. I don't know if you guys caught it, but I was using some lube in there. Um, I was just using some engine oil. Uh, as long as you get some kind of lubricant in there. Um, gear oil is good to use, but it's just kind of messy, so I use engine oil. Um, when you're checking the preload, you got to have these bearings lubed up. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people will say that the bearings, uh, when they come brand new, already have some kind of coating on them that kind of acts like lubricant. I don't like it that way. Um, I went ahead and I checked it before I lubed it up. And then I, um, you know, I checked the preload before and then I added some oil in there. And then I checked it after and the readings did change. It went down. So um, adding fluid obviously is going to help it spin a little better and it's going to take some of the resistance out of the, the factor. So um, it went down. That being said, uh, you know, when you do that, you want to make sure that your final reading is going to be with the lube on there. Um, some people will forget about it and they'll try to set it up to what they think it needs to be. My personal preference, I don't believe in that. Always use lube when you're checking this stuff. Got the new ring gear on there, on the old spool. Those babies have some red Loctite on them. Those are hard to get off. I've never had the bolts be that tight in a ring gear before. Um, normally my gun gets them off pretty easily, but uh, there are some nice ARP bolts he's got in there, and they used a bunch of red Loctite, which is good. They ain't gonna back off that way. So, <clears throat> But, um, you know, getting them in there and pulling them out, there's two different stories. Get them in there is easy. I got about 100 foot pounds of torque on this gun. I can get out of it maybe 110, um, which is plenty for this application. Um, but getting them off, you need probably like 160 foot pounds of torque to get those things out of there. Well, after the Loctite gets all hardened and everything. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw what I was doing um, when I was putting the bolts in. I was kind of double checking something. I ran into something before and it's a measurement kind of deal. When you're using aftermarket gear sets and aftermarket bolts and stuff, um, you will find sometimes that the hole, let me show you right here, the ring gear, the hole in the ring gear where the threads are, sometimes the bolt that you're using will be too long. And I ran into this before in my car where it looks like it's all the way bottomed out and it will get tight, but it's actually bottomed out in the bottom. The bolt hit or the, the bolt thread part of it will be bottomed out and the torque you're getting on it is not actually clamping torque, it's bottoming out torque. And what will happen, and it happened to me, is the bolts will start breaking off. Because what will happen is the ring gear will start 
moving back and forth in the little plate that the bolts have, you know, in the bolt holes, and it will start snapping bolts off one by one. <laughs> and so I, I was in um, a race two years ago, and it was a really, really rough track, but I'm sure it would have happened eventually, and um, all of a sudden the, the car just popped out of gear. And what happened was literally all the bolts had broken off, and the ring gear fell off the spool in the middle of the race. So basically all, all those bolts have broken off had ended up in the right rear axle tube where the bearing is. So it toasted the bearing, it got all wedged in between the axle and the housing itself. So it scored everything up, the axle and the housing itself. So I was just measuring with my screwdriver. I'll show you kind of how I did it here um, on the pumpkin. I just would go in with my screwdriver, see how far it goes down and mark with my finger. And I'll come over with that measurement to the bolt and make sure that the bolt is shorter than that distance. In this case, they were, it was close, but they were, they were shorter, so ended up being okay here. So now I'm gonna put the pinion in the housing and I just measured the shim that came with the old 7.0 gear and it's a 22,000 shim, which is probably perfect. Um, in my findings, these nine inches usually like around a 20 to 22, 25,000 shim um, on these higher, gears that we're using like 650, 700, 733. Um, usually they, they like that kind of shim, but it all really depends on the gear manufacturer and how they set it up in their uh, factory. So <clears throat> I'm gonna put this in here and start measuring everything and um, just kind of mocking everything up. I'm not gonna bolt anything down yet until we get all the measurements uh, that we need first. Okay, so got the ring gear and the spool and the pinion support and the pinion gear all together in the housing. <clears throat> Basically, just cinched down all the bolts um, and I turned in the adjusters here um, enough to get about eight thousandths of backlash right now. Um, I'm going to run a pattern and check it. I didn't put any preload in the bearings yet, or at least not very much, not nearly enough. Um, Unfortunately, remember how I told you guys that I had bought some pretty cool trick tools for this stuff? Um, this being the tool. Um, this guy is supposed to be able to go ahead and... Let me turn on this light. It's kind of getting in the way here. This guy is supposed to go in here. I don't know, I'm doing this backwards. Let's try it again. And the side adjuster. And... Um, these three little prongs are able to go in the holes and you can put a big old breaker bar in here Because if anybody who's done this before knows that this is probably the most time-consuming and hard part is getting the side bearing preload <clears throat> Especially if you don't have a, a good spanner wrench um, Just because getting a preload on here basically means that you need to turn this nut and for anybody who's backwoods and homegrown and doesn't have those tools that are expensive that I finally went out and bought um, they do it like I used to do it and it's basically taking a chisel or a screwdriver of some sort and putting it in the hole and then smacking it because this thing gets really really tight once you get some preload on it and you really have to crank on these things you actually will start stretching the housing these two caps right here will actually start to stretch a little bit that's how much of preload you have to get on these things to get any kind of side bearing preload which you need um, to keep your backlash and everything up tight so it's not a great way to do it. I've done it before in the past. I hate doing it that way because you put these big old grooves in the uh, adjusters. And then if you do it more, more than one time, then you kind of run out and you basically will eventually run out of holes that you can work with. And the inner part of this adjuster will literally just fall out because you have broken off every single contact. Um, it's kind of like breaking a rim, breaking a spoke on a rim. If you break all of them, then the hub's gonna fall out of it. So about this, doesn't work on these ones. This style, nine inch, um, I don't know what this is out of, but I guess they had changed 
the design along, down the line somewhere. I don't know if this is a factory production adjuster or if this is something aftermarket, but I haven't seen it yet. It's not a stock thing, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, so this is not gonna work for me. I had bought this spanner wrench in the past to try to get the preload and it didn't work very well. This thing, they just, they're not big enough here. So um, maybe it'll work better on this design uh, side adjuster, but I'm not sure. We're gonna see though. So unfortunately can't use this. So I'm probably not gonna do it tonight just because I don't wanna mess around with it too much. I wanna get going on my car here. I gotta still pull the pumpkin out. Um, which is just basically like another 10 or 12 bolts away from um, getting that out and slapping the new one in. So I'll probably get back to this later, but we're almost there. Um, I was thinking about running a pattern on it, but I'm going to do that later too. So I'm just going to put a pause and then take you guys over here. All right, guys, I'm under here and I realized that I did not give myself very much clearance. Didn't jack the car up high enough. <coughs> I usually put all the um, jack stands as high as they go, but I don't know what I was thinking. So I'm under here pinched. I'm going to get yanked this thing out. So check it out. All right, so I pulled the gear out, as you guys saw, and kind of a funny story. Uh, I was just describing to you guys how <clears throat> I had had some problems with the ring gear bolts bottoming out, and I had caught it along the way, um, finding a shorter bolt will fix the trick. Um, so this is a 733 gear I built a long time ago. This is before I, I had found out about um, the bolts being a little bit too long, possibly. And so this has been in my cars for a long time. I figured it was okay because it's been through so many races. Um, I'd probably say it's got at least 15 races on it or so. Um, <laughs> so I pulled it out and I just caught it in time, it looks like. Thank God I'm running Stockton and I had to make a gear swap because this thing would not lasted another five laps, probably. Look at this. All these bolts are backing off. I'll see if I can see this. That's the ring gear floating on the spool. I mean, these things are just not even finger tight. <laughs> All of them are like that. None of them have broken off yet. None of them came out, thank God. Um, the ring gear looks okay. I did rotate it all the way around, looked at all the teeth. It looks okay. The fluid looked really clean coming out. Um, but I still need to tear it apart and go ahead and check out the pinion gear and the pinion bearings and all that stuff. Um, really, really lucky on this one, guys. So kind of a coincidence how I was teaching you guys how to build a rear end tonight. And then here I pull mine out and mine has failed, but it's a user error. Um, most likely too long of bolts in there and it was bottoming out. That's kind of the problem you're getting with these spools because when you get these aftermarket spools, they're a lot thinner than your basic mini spool um, stock housing type. Those are a lot thicker. They have a lot thicker flange. So the generic bolts will always work on those, but these lightweight uh, thin spools, <laughs> those, those standard bolts just don't like them. They're a little bit, little, just a little too long, a couple threads too long. So. Um, I could try cutting them, um, grinding off a couple threads, um, or I might just get some new bolts, one of the two. But anyways, that's going to do for this video, guys. Um, I'm going to be closing up shop here in a second. Kind of tired. Had to work a full day. So we'll be back at it again, showing you guys the finishing touches on this gear and putting the new gear in this car. Um, and then I'll be doing some body work and stuff. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Please stay tuned. There's going to be some more videos coming up in the next couple of days or so. Um, 
So go ahead and, and subscribe and, and uh, like this video. Go ahead and share it if you can. Really appreciate everybody out there helping me out and um, watching my videos. So thanks, guys, and we will see you very soon.